Well, hey, Troy, I heard about Big Troy's induction into the Football Hall of Fame. Exciting, huh? Yeah, I guess. Well, you, uh, you don't seem too happy about it. Are you okay? No, I'm not. I was going to go on a cruise, but I missed the boat. What do you, what do you mean you, you missed the boat? Well, when I got to the boat dock, they said that the ship had sailed. Oh, my. Well, well, that's not good. What are you going to do? I don't know. I'm really sad. And I'm feeling a bit down about the whole thing. Well, yeah, I can understand that, Troy. Well, let's talk about that a little bit. Did you ever hear someone say that ship has sailed? Well, obviously you have. Sorry about that. Didn't mean to be flippant with that. But did you ever hear the phrase that ship has sailed? Maybe somebody said it and you heard it. They might have been talking about an opportunity or a possibility or maybe something that was planned that is no longer available. Much like little Troy's here experience with the ship that has sailed. He missed his cruise. I could say, you know what? I was hoping to get to bed early tonight, but clearly that ship has sailed. I missed the opportunity to go. Something else happened. So... The expression that ship has sailed is often used in response to a question as to why someone hasn't accomplished something yet. And the ship is the opportunity that hasn't been taken. Well, we often say it when we come to believe that time is no longer on our side. For instance, someone might ask, how come you never wrote that book that you've always talked about? And you might say, it's too late, that ship has sailed. And Troy, I do understand that you're disappointed about missing the boat. <laughs> uh, but sometimes we do experience disappointment. And what should we do when that happens? Well, if it's something that we can't change, it is healthy to work at making adjustments and maybe not becoming too upset about the things that we can't change or have no control over. For instance, the boat's not going to come back for you. It's already out there. Yeah, I guess so. So if you have something else that you can do, that might be good. Oh, I'll think about it. Okay, well, that's good. You know, some people might say, what's done is done. It's time to move on. Yeah, that's some good advice. There's also some other good advice that's found in the Bible. One piece of advice or one word of advice or a verse of advice, actually, is from Isaiah 43, 18, where it says, forget the things that have happened in the past. Do not keep on thinking about them. You know, you might have heard someone say, don't dwell on the past. Well, that's what that verse is talking about. And we do need to look ahead. Romans 8, 18, the Apostle Paul says, what we are suffering now is nothing compared with our future glory. In other words, things will get better eventually. And we call this an eternal perspective. Philippians 3.14, Paul says, I push myself forward toward the goal to win the prize. God has appointed me to win it. The heavenly prize is Christ Jesus himself. We need to know, little Troy, that God's plans for us are trustworthy. In Jeremiah 29 in the Old Testament, verse 11, it says, I know the plans I have for you, announces the Lord. I want you to enjoy success. I do not plan to harm you. I will give you hope for the years to come. Hmm. Philippians 4, 6 from the New Testament says, and we've heard this one before. We've talked about it. Don't worry about anything. No matter what happens, tell God about everything. Ask and pray and give thanks to him. So, little Troy, I know that your ship has sailed. <laughs> yes, it has. So I just want to wish you the best and hope that you can adjust well to this change and that you won't be set too sad going forward. Well, I'll work on it. Okay, that's all I can ask. So thanks, and I'll wish you and our friends a day that's filled with joy and a day that's filled with peace.